Sprite Sheets are awesome. They allow an artist to condense all the animation information for a character or object into just one image. I'm going to show you how we can take two Sprite Sheets and create an awesome magic attack animation like this right here. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to convert those Sprite Sheets into animated images. Then we're going to create objects out of them. And finally, we'll make a cool little attack animation, just like you saw in our room. Let's dive in. So here in Game Maker, I have just two sprites. This first one is the magic attack. The second one is the character with all of the potential poses that they could have. Let's start with the magic attack animation as it's a little simpler. I'm going to click on edit image and you can see this sprite sheet has all of the animation laid out in rows. And what we need to do is take that information and convert it to individual frames up here. So then we can press play and view them animating. Game Maker has a built in tool for that. Under image at the top, we can come over to convert to frames. And this is going to take the sprite sheet and with whatever settings we put into it, we'll convert it to individual frames. So this opens up a new window for us with that sprite sheet in it. I'm going to go ahead and bring this a little larger and then click on the center fit button. And now we can see the sprite sheet better. So there are two main things we need to know, which is how many there are in the sprite sheet, how many frames and what the size of each of these frames are. Wherever you get your sprite sheet from read on there as oftentimes they'll tell you the exact size. I know the image here is 100 by 100 for every frame. So, we can come down here and under frame width and height, I can type in 100 and 100. And that takes this little box to be 100 by 100. Now we have to figure out how many frames there are. This is seven by seven. So if I type in, there are 49 frames altogether and there are seven frames per row, it creates the grid that we need. Now, if we look at the bottom here, the last seven here, and even this last one on the second to last row doesn't have any information in it. So I'm going to subtract eight from 49, which gives us 41. Now the very first frame is also blank, but we'll deal with that after we are converted to frames. So I'm going to click on convert and it's asking us if we are sure we want to proceed because it's going to delete the original image, which is okay because we're overriding it. I'm going to click yes. And now you can see we have every single frame in its own image. The first one here is blank. So I'm going to click on it and click X and then we can press play and voila, we've converted a sprite sheet into an animated sprite. Really cool. Now for the attack we're going to do, this is going to face the other direction. So I'm going to go ahead and come up here to image. And I just need to rotate all frames counterclockwise by 90 degrees, which is what that does right there. We'll go ahead and rename this to SPR magic attack. I'll full size this right here. And I'm going to want the origin to be right where it starts. So I'm going to give it a custom origin right there. And if we wanted to, we could change the FPS, but this I think looks really nice. Let's go to Fumiko, the next sprite sheet we have. So let's click on edit image. So you can see that there's a whole lot more going on here. This sprite sheet contains all the animations for this character, such as walking, running, dying, dashing, attacking, and they're all put together right here. But the process is still the exact same thing. So we're going to go to image and convert to frames. And I'm going to make this a little bit larger because we need to be able to see what we're converting. And this is still kind of small. So I'm going to hold control and zoom in with my middle mouse wheel. And this we can actually get a lot closer. So the last settings we used are still the ones applied here. So you can see this frame width and height are still at 100. Now this sprite sheet uses a frame width of 24 and a frame height of 32. Sometimes you have to just play around with these numbers until you find them. Where I got this from didn't tell me that. I had to just plug in numbers until it looked right. This can take a while and that's where these other settings can come in handy. Sometimes sprite sheets can have 
offset in between every single image or some padding, and that's where you can play around with these. So if you had a little bit of separation between every single image, you can change the horizontal and vertical separation. If there was no sprites for the first full column, you can change that. And if you had just a little bit off, you can actually drag your rectangle around, and that's this horizontal and vertical pixel offset. I'm gonna set these back to zero. Now, I don't want 41 frames of this. Instead, I need to find the animation I'm looking for. So if I'm gonna middle mouse click and drag, and I'm looking for this animation right here. And it is one, two, three, four, five frames long. This last one is for the top attack, like looking up, and that's not what we want. So I only want five frames, and at that point, we don't really need to change the frames per row, but we can. And my grid is up here, but I need this set of animation. So I'm gonna just click and it brings it over here. And then I'm just gonna find exactly where it needs to be, which is right there. And when we're all happy with it, we click convert, click yes, and here it is. So we can press play, but it's gonna go really, really fast because there's only five frames in here. So I'm gonna exit out of that, bring this to center fit, and I'm gonna change my origin to middle center. I'm going to change the FPS to eight, and then if we press play, it's a much more reasonable speed. I'm gonna change this to SPR player, and that's how you convert complex sprite sheets into animated sprites. Now let's create that cool animation I showed you in the beginning. First, we're gonna need two objects. So I'm gonna click on objects and then I'm going to press this create asset, objects, dial it up to two and click create. So object one is going to be obj player and object two will be obj spell. I'm gonna drag the sprites to the appropriate objects and we just need to do a little bit of code. And now in OBJ player, I'm going to add a create event really quickly. And I'm gonna set image speed equal to zero. That way our player isn't animating while they're standing still. Kind of gives her an idle animation. Then I'm gonna create a key pressed event for the space bar. In here, I want to set the image speed back to one and I wanna create the spell object that's going to fly. So we're gonna say instance create layer, and it's gonna be at X and Y for where we are on the instances layer, and we're gonna create the object spell. Now, there's another event we can use that's really handy, and it's under other, and it's called animation end. This event triggers when an animation is done playing. So in this case, we only want the player to trigger the animation one time when we press space. And when we're done, we'll set the image speed back to zero so they stop animating. Then, in the OBJ spell, I'm going to add a create event. And in here, we're gonna set the speed of the object equal to two. The direction is already facing to the right, so by setting the speed, it's going to fly to the right at two pixels per frame, which is exactly what we're looking for. Lastly, we're gonna go into our room and we're gonna place our OBJ player on the left-hand side. Now, this is a very small sprite compared to the size of our room. So what I'm gonna do is just quickly set up a camera. I'm gonna click on room one, go over to viewports and cameras and enable the viewports click on viewport zero and enable this to be visible. And I'm gonna change this to 240 by 136 for the camera size, come down and I'm gonna make it so the camera follows our player object. And I'm gonna set the horizontal border to be 320 and the vertical border to be 320. And if we press F5, we can now see the room and we can create the spell with our attack by pressing the space bar. And that's how you can take just a couple sprite sheets and create something really cool. I hope you found that helpful and you learned something new. If I missed anything important about sprite sheets, leave a comment below, let me know, and I would love to hear it. Thank you very much for joining me. If you want to see more from me, check out the links in the description below. And as always, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later.